FIP, feline infectious peritonitis. Just a few years ago, this was 100% fatal. In addition to being hard to diagnose with certainty, we had no effective treatments and euthanasia was oftentimes the only option we could offer. But now everything has changed. In 2024, the first legal FIP treatment became available. And in just a few years, we went from a disease that was 100% fatal to one that is now curable in most cats. Honestly, something I never thought I would see in my career. Absolutely incredible. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Oz. Today we are breaking down what FIP is, what cats are most susceptible, what symptoms to watch out for, how we diagnose it, and most exciting of all, how we are saving these cats. How cats get FIP. Most cats at some point are exposed to a benign coronavirus, often referred to as feline enteric coronavirus. This virus can cause soft stool or diarrhea, mild upper respiratory symptoms, or nothing at all. In most cases, it is self-limiting and cats recover uneventfully. And just to be clear, when I say coronavirus, I am not talking about the virus that causes COVID. That is a different coronavirus. In rare cases, that benign virus mutates in some cats. We don't know exactly why, genetics may play a role, but when it does, it triggers the serious and used to be deadly disease we call FIP. There are two main forms, wet FIP where fluid starts to build up in body cavities like the chest and belly, and dry FIP where inflammation starts to show up in places like the nervous system, the eyes, liver, kidney, digestive tract, and lymph nodes. And as you can imagine, these locations make it much more difficult to diagnose the dry form of FIP. Any cat can potentially get FIP. However, we do see it more frequently in cats under two years of age, in purebred cats, and cats that are housed in high density environments, such as rescues, shelters, and catteries. FIP symptoms. Here's the tricky part. There is not a single symptom that is unique to FIP. Initially, when cats are exposed to feline enteric coronavirus, they may have upper respiratory symptoms, and oftentimes we chalk that up to herpes virus. They may have soft stool or diarrhea, which we often chalk up to parasites, dietary indiscretion, or food sensitivity, or they may have nothing at all. Only a small percentage of cats that are exposed to feline enteric coronavirus will develop FIP, and this may take weeks, months, or years. Here are some symptoms that you may notice with the wet and dry forms of FIP. For both forms, cats may develop a loss of appetite, weight loss, depression, lethargy, or fever. If the dry form affects the nervous system, symptoms may include seizures and ataxia or difficulty walking, and these symptoms develop slowly. In some cats, a cloudy eye may be the only symptom of dry FIP. With the wet form, Fluid begins to accumulate in a body cavity like the chest or abdomen, and these cats may have labored breathing or distended belly, respectively. Personally, I have two presentations in my mind that really get me thinking about FIP. The first is a young cat that is losing weight. They have many upper respiratory infections, typically with a fever, that respond to an antibiotic, only for them to recur after the antibiotic is stopped. My second presentation is when cat parents notice a big or distended belly. I can feel a fluid wave in the abdomen and it's very easy to pull off yellow sticky fluid by inserting a needle. Testing for FIP. There is no definitive test to diagnose FIP. <clears throat> there is no test that is 100% accurate in diagnosing FIP. Oftentimes, a diagnosis of FIP is a best guess with signalment history, symptoms, and diagnostic tests pointing in the general direction of FIP, or it's a diagnosis of exclusion. That means we've ruled out a bunch of other diseases for a cat's symptoms and FIP is left. The test that has been the most consistent and helpful for me in diagnosing FIP is the AG ratio, which is the ratio of the blood proteins albumin and globulin. And with this test, I have three numbers in my mind, 0.4, 0.6 and 0.8. Above 0.8, I'm not really thinking FIP, but if that number falls below 0.8, FIP is a consideration. If that number falls below 0.6, FIP is more of a consideration. And if that number hits 0.4 or below, with the appropriate signalment and symptoms, 
FIP is at the top of my list. Now, obviously you can't just use this single test to make a diagnosis of FIP, and there are studies out there that contradict this. However, used in conjunction with other parameters, it has really helped me make a diagnosis of FIP, which then allows me to start treatment sooner. Detecting fluid in the chest or belly, either with an x-ray or an ultrasound, can be particularly useful because FIP fluid does not look or feel like other body effusions. The classic FIP effusion is yellow, sticky, and stringy due to all the protein in the fluid. If I find fluid with these characteristics and corresponding symptoms, I diagnose FIP right on the spot. There is a coronavirus antibody or titer blood test. A positive result simply means a cat has been exposed to the relatively benign feline enteric coronavirus. The antibody test is not specific for FIP and cannot be used to diagnose FIP definitively. Cats with a high titer are no more likely to develop FIP or become a carrier than cats with a low titer. However, if we have a young cat that is losing weight with a fever that's not really responding to antibiotics and they have a positive antibody test, it is usually assumed they have FIP. However, as already mentioned, even without an antibody test, these cats are already on my radar for FIP. There are some more sophisticated tests that can detect FIP viral proteins. However, they have the same limitations as the antibody test they are not 100% accurate. So if your vet is thinking FIP, they can support that diagnosis, but you can't say it's FIP 100%. Conversely, a negative test does not rule out FIP completely. Having said all of that, a positive test from part of the body, that could be fluid from a body cavity or a tissue sample, might suggest FIP because we would not expect to find the virus in that location. Now, I haven't been completely honest. There is a way we can diagnose FIP, and that is with histopathology or looking at cells from a tissue sample. This test is either not done because the cat is too unwell to perform a biopsy safely, or it is done only after a cat has passed. Because of these reasons, this is not a realistic way to diagnose FIP. Treating FIP. Before we had the current legal GS441524 treatment, we either prescribed an antibiotic for cats with a fever or upper respiratory infection, or we prescribed a steroid to help keep them comfortable, which was difficult to do if they had an active infection. Pretty much all of these cats were eventually euthanized because they really didn't respond to treatment and their health continued to decline. Right around the time COVID hit, remember that is a different coronavirus. We began to hear chatter about an unapproved, black market FIP treatment. And for the first time ever, cats were beating and surviving FIP. And this put us vets in a difficult spot. We couldn't just prescribe an illegal treatment with an active veterinary license in good standing. We couldn't really even talk about it. And by treatments, these weren't something you could just call into a pharmacy and pick up. There was a lot of questions around these medications and where they were coming from. Specifically, the vials had unknown sources and varied greatly in their drug concentration. You would literally have to go and pick it up from someone in a neighboring town after it was passed around the FIP community. And the crazy thing was, it was working. Clients would make connections with the FIP community, pick up their vials, and start treating their cats. And even though I wasn't a fan of where they were getting their medications and not really knowing what they were injecting into their cats, could we actually have an FIP treatment that cures cats? Yes, yes we did. After managing dozens of cats of clients that were treating FIP with black market injections, and now the legal form of GS441524 treatments, the vast majority of cats do well and make a full recovery. This is so exciting and what a great time to be a cat vet. Now, unfortunately, since we have the legal compounded form of the medication, the black market version cannot be recommended mainly because it's illegal, that's why we couldn't talk about it in the past, and for quality and safety issues. Treatment is typically 12 weeks, but recommendations may vary based on the type and location of FIP, with the dry form affecting the nervous system being the most challenging to treat. There are many options, including tablets, liquid, and injections that are given under the skin. However, it is recommended to start with the oral forms of GS441524. The injections can be painful and skin reactions can occur, and this can really put a stress on the bond you have with your cat. 
Many of these cats had to go on gabapentin to help with pain so we could continue the injections. There have also been a few reports of sarcoma formation at the injection sites in some cats. Dosing will depend on the cat. Typically we start off with a low dose and if our expectations are not being met, that dose may be increased. If a cat has neurological FIP, the starting dose will be much higher. And as a cat gains weight, a positive response to treatment, that dose needs to be adjusted accordingly. Unfortunately, treatment is expensive, but I kind of like the idea of spending a lot of money early in life with the potential for 10 to 15 good quality years ahead of us, which is in contrast to what we are currently doing now, which is to spend a lot of money towards the end of life with the idea that we don't have many years left. These are some of my happiest clients, especially when we compare those first few days where we have a cat that is pretty unwell, not doing too much, to the end of treatment where the cat looks amazing and those crazy cat antics have returned. And before we continue, just a quick recap. A few years ago, treatment was non-existent. FIP was 100% fatal. And now with treatment, most cats are beating this disease. The only unknown for me is that will there be any issues down the road in cats that were treated for FIP? Only time will tell. Monitoring on treatment. The biggest indicator to look for is how quickly a cat gets better and gains weight. In fact, a very sick cat should look significantly better after a week of treatment. They literally should go from zero to 60 within a week, and you should get in the habit of checking their weight weekly. And if that doesn't happen, we may need to rethink our FIP diagnosis because something else may be going on that either has similar symptoms to FIP or is coexisting with FIP. Now, potentially, treatment may serve as a diagnostic test especially if finances are an issue and we have a high suspicion of FIP because if a cat does not have significant improvements after seven days of treatment, we kind of just ruled out FIP. I hesitate to even say this because at the end of the day, we should be using our diagnostic tests to move us towards a diagnosis of FIP and only those cats should be treated with the proper treatment. If we start to get lazy and say, it might be FIP, let's see if they respond to treatment, even though this may be appropriate in some situations, we are setting ourselves up for antiviral resistance. It would be a shame to go from 100% fatal disease to curing most cats back to a fatal disease because of antiviral medication resistance. Rarely is the answer to go up on a medication, and it can be confusing in some situations because part of many cat diseases is a waxing and waning of signs. A slight improvement does not necessarily mean a response to treatment. A significant improvement means a response to treatment. So if your cat just isn't responding and the dose keeps going up, look for something else. It's probably not FIP. A good general guideline is to check labs at week four, eight, and 12 during treatment. Abnormal lab tests should start to normalize after a few weeks with some parameters like the AG ratio might get worse before they get better. If lab tests do not normalize after a few weeks, look for something else. Fluid in a body cavity can take some time, like weeks to resolve. However, if it's not improving or persist, it might be time to look for a different cause. Fortunately, side effects are pretty rare with the oral medication, unlike the injections. One thing we may notice is a mild increase in a liver enzyme, ALT, and rarely does this need to be addressed. Preventing FIP. Unfortunately, there is no way to truly prevent FIP, and most cats will be exposed to the benign feline enteric coronavirus at some point in their life, especially during the kitten months and in high-density housing situations like rescues, shelters, and catteries. It is not believed that a truly FIP-positive cat can pass FIP to another cat. Although some recommend separating these cats, it is not really known if this is effective. There is an FIP vaccine and its effect in this is not that great. It is not recommended by the American Association of Feline Practitioners. Instead of a vaccine, there are other things one can do to help minimize the spread of coronavirus, like only house a few cats together to minimize stress since FIP is more common in environments with multiple cats. Separate cats that are showing symptoms, especially soft stool, diarrhea, and upper respiratory infections even if mild, to help prevent the spread of feline enteric coronavirus. Practice good hygiene, especially if many cats are housed together, like washing your hands between cats and after handling or cleaning litter boxes. Since the fecal oral route is a common way to pass feline enteric coronavirus between each 
other. These practices should be done anyway, even if cats are not showing any symptoms because some cats show absolutely no symptoms when infected with the virus and the virus can remain dormant or inactive for months to years in the body before any symptoms of disease which can make prevention extremely difficult. And keep cats as healthy as possible. The body uses its immune system to help protect against invaders like coronavirus. So keeping cats healthy, up to date on vaccines, and addressing medical issues early as they arise, especially common ailments that can affect kittens like fleas, parasites, and upper respiratory infections, can be beneficial. The FIP Treatment Commitment. Treating FIP is a big commitment. A commitment of 12 weeks of giving a daily life-saving medication. A commitment that may require a bit of creativity to help ensure your cat gets their medication each and every day, especially as they start to feel better and their anti-human ninja skills return. This may put stress on the relationship with your cat. You should not feel ashamed or embarrassed. Don't get discouraged if you're having a tough time getting medications to your cat. Speak with your veterinary team. They're gonna have a ton of tips for you so we can continue giving medications without interruptions. And part of this commitment is being honest about what you are able to do. If you cannot give a tablet, go with a liquid version and do this at the beginning of treatment. And make Churus your friend because the tablet can be crushed and hidden in a treat or food. Here's the bonus. Once you get good at medicating your cat, you are setting yourself up for success later in life because your cat will require medications for something unrelated down the road. Your cat will associate treats with getting medication, especially if you're regular and consistent with time of day, location, etc. FIP used to be a heartbreaking diagnosis, one we dreaded giving to cat parents. But today, thanks to GS441524, not only are cats surviving, they are thriving. We've gone from a disease that was 100% fatal to one that is beatable. And for me as a vet, that is nothing short of incredible. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on my next video.